Hello and welcome to the Little Sun School Science Class YouTube channel. In this video, you're going to learn about the human regulatory system. This video is made by Alexander Riovilio Setiawan and Graciela Carissa Valens Gunawan. After watching this video guide, you must be able to understand the overall meaning and mechanism of the regulatory system, identify the organs involved and its function, differentiate the three types of neurons inside the human body, Explain using your own words how human can sense things, able to know diseases that are related to the regulatory system. The nervous system is the core of the regulatory system. It has three principal functions, sensory input, integration, and motor output. Sensory input carries impulse or signal from the receptor. Integration is an impulse or signal processing process to produce response. Motor output carries impulse from the brain to the effector cells, like muscle cells, to produce response. Human nervous system are made of a special cell called a neuron. Neuron works to send impulse or signal from the receptor to the central nerves continues to the effector. Neuron is arranged out of three parts, the cell body or soma, dendrites, and axon. The cell has a nucleus, cytoplasm, and a cell membrane. Dendrites are branch fibers from the cell body of a neuron. Axon is a long and thin fiber that has no branches. Axon is wrapped by a myelin. It is insulated by a myelin sheet that composed with swan cells throughout its length. Among those myelin sheets, there are unsheeted axons called the node of Ranvier. Neuron has divided into three types, sensory neuron, interneuron, and motor neuron. Sensory neurons are unipolar, which means it has only one axon or process extending from the cell body which then branches into two more processes that extend in opposite direction. True unipolar cells are only found in vertebrates, but unipolar cells in humans are more appropriately known as the pseudo-unipolar cells. Sensory neurons carry impulse from receptor to the central nervous system. Interneurons are bipolar, which means it has two processes extending from the cell body, one axon and one dendrite. Interneurons interconnect the sensory neurons with the motor neurons. Motor neurons are multipolar, which means each cell contains a single axon and multiple dendrite. Motor neurons carry impulse from central nervous system to the effector. We will continue to discuss the three types of neuron in the next section. To transmit the impulse to the central nervous system and the effector, nerve cells will be interconnected through synapses. Conduction of impulses occurs in one direction only. Synapses may happen between two neurons, neurons and muscle cells, neuron and glands. Neuron that carries impulses to the synapses called as a presynaptic neuron, while neuron that carries impulses away from the synapse called as a postsynaptic neuron. Between two neurons, there is a synaptic cleft. Impulses are being transmitted to synaptic cleft by a neurotransmitter. These are examples of neurotransmitters. There are adrenaline, noradrenaline, dopamine, serotonin, gamma aminobutric acid, acetylcholine, and glutamate. Binding of neurotransmitters to the receptor will open the ion channels in the postsynaptic membrane. Ions will flow into the postsynaptic neuron and it can trigger either short term changes, such as changes in its membrane potential. Neurotransmitters that are attached to receptors will be broken down by enzymes or will be transported back to the presynaptic neuron. Ion channels will close when it releasing the neurotransmitters. There are two major regions in the nervous system, central nervous system or CNS and peripheral nervous system or PNS. Let's take a look at the CNS first. CNS consists of two major parts, the brain and the spinal cord. Both of them are protected by the meninges. Meninges is a three-layered membrane consisting of the pia mater, arachnoid, and dura mater. Between arachnoid mater and dura mater, there is a cavity containing serous spinal fluid. This fluid protects the brain and spinal cord from trauma. The brain controls all the body functions, which take an important role in the human nervous system. It is divided into three parts forebrain, midbrain, and hindbrain. The brain is consists of gray matter and white matter. The gray matter is found abundant in the cerebrum, brainstem, and cerebellum, while white matter is found in deeper areas of the cerebrum and cerebellum. 
The spinal cord works to carry impulse to the brain. It also contains reflex arc, which make it can control reflexes. Similar to the brain, it also consists of gray matter and white matter. The gray matter forms a butterfly structure, while white matter is distributed around the central gray matter, the butterfly structure. Next, we'll discuss the peripheral nervous system. PNS is divided into two, the avian nervous system and avian nervous system. Afferent nervous system carries impulse from the receptor to CNS, while afferent nervous system carries impulse from CNS to the effector. Afferent nervous system is divided into two, somatic and autonomic. Somatic carries impulse from CNS to skeletal muscles, while autonomic carries impulse from CNS to smooth muscles, cardiac muscle, and glands. Sympathetic nerves control aspects of the body related to the fight or flight response, while parasympathetic nerves brings back the body to homeostasis after the fight or flight response. After discussing the human nervous system, let's move to the next part, the endocrine system. The endocrine system transmitted information in the form of chemicals called hormones. Hormones are made from special glands called endocrine glands. There are 10 endocrine glands in the human body. Each gland produces hormones and each hormone has a different job. Hypothalamus produces hormones that control the work of the pituitary gland. It produces releasing hormone to stimulate the pituitary gland to secrete certain hormone. In pituitary gland, we have anterior and posterior pituitary gland. The anterior pituitary gland produces GH for the body metabolism, FSH for stimulating egg and sperm production, LH for stimulating the testis to secrete testosterone, TSH for stimulating the thyroid gland to secrete thyroxine, ADH for stimulating the adrenal gland to secrete steroid hormones, MSH for stimulating melanin production, and endorphin to reduce pain. While in the posterior pituitary gland, it produces oxytocin for stimulating uterine production and milk secretion, and ADH to balance the amount of water in the blood. Pineal gland produces melatonin for maintaining circadian rhythms or sleep-wake cycles. Thyroid gland produces thyroxine for metabolism and calcitocin for regulating the blood calcium levels. Parathyroid gland produces parathyroid hormones for regulating the blood calcium levels. Thymus gland produces thymosin that takes a role in immune function. Pancreas produces two hormones, insulin and glucagon. Both of them works to regulate the blood sugar levels. In adrenal gland, we have adrenal medulla and adrenal cortex. Adrenal medulla produces adrenaline to increase heart rate and blood pressure. It also produces norepinephrine to break down fat and increase blood sugar levels, providing more energy to the body. While in adrenal cortex, it produces glucocorticoid that involve in the response to illness and also regulating body metabolism and mineral low corticoid for regulating the concentration of minerals inside the kidney. Testes produce testosterone, which help the production of sperm and causes the development of male secondary sexual characteristics. Ovary produces estrogen, which help to stimulate the growth of the uterus, and it causes the development of female secondary sexual characteristics. It also produces progesterone that regulates the menstrual cycle and gets the uterus ready for pregnancy. Sensory neuron is a central nervous system neurons that can change or convert stimulus into action or graded potential. Interneuron or relay neuron is a connecting neuron. So it acts like a bridge between two other neurons. While motor neuron is a neuron that can control or regulate human muscles either directly or indirectly. We can sense things around us thanks to the presence of the three neuron. To get a better understanding of how we, human, can sense things, let's see the example given. It shows a man, topless apparently, touching a candle. So this is when it starts. The man's receptor in the skin receives a stimulation. In this case, the heat from the candle. The stimulation is perceived as an electrical signal or impulse. This impulse will then be sent to our brain and spinal cord simultaneously. The information or the electrical impulse synapses in the spinal cord and the motor neuron will transmit the impulse to the limbs muscle. The muscles will contract and cause the hand to pull away from the candle. 
which is caused by the motor neuron. This whole process occurs in just a few milliseconds, hence causing a quite sudden move called reflex. The track or the path taken by the impulse is called the reflex arc. It is called an arc because the shape of the path looks like an arc. Next, we'll talk about action potential. Action potential helps the transmission of the signal across the action of the neuron to synaptic boutons located at the action terminal. The action potential involves potassium and sodium ions and is divided into five phases. They are the rising phase, the peak phase, the falling phase, the undershoot, and the refractory period. The first phase, the rising phase. This phase started when there is a stimulus received, causing the channels to open and therefore allowing sodium ions to get in. The inward flow of sodium ions causing the membrane potential to be more positively charged are also known as depolarized. This phase will continue explosively until all ion channels available are open, causing a rocketing increase in the membrane potential value. This marks the end of the first phase and the entry to the next phase, which is the peak phase. Peak phase started when the sodium ions influx causes the polarity of the plasma membrane to reverse. This causes the ion channels to deactivate rapidly. This also marks the end of the depolarization process and the peak of the membrane potential value. The peak phase is when the action potential happen. The next phase is the falling phase. This phase started when the inactivity of the ion channel causing no more sodium ions can enter the neuron. As a result, potassium channels are activated. Hence, there is an outward flow of potassium ions causing the membrane potential returns to the resting state. In other words, the membrane potential value is lower or more negatively charged compared to the previous phase, the peak phase. The subsequent phase, as in on the graph, is the undershoot phase. In this phase, there is a short moment where the membrane potential charges more negatively than at the resting state. And the last phase is refractory period. This phase is where the following or the upcoming action potential is hard, difficult, or even impossible to fire. This phase may overlap with other phases as well. This also marks the end of action potential phases. Please note that the action potential phases only last about a few milliseconds. Inside the human regulatory system, several organs help us sense things. Today, we will discuss four of them, tongue, eye, nose, and ear. The tongue is an organ made out of muscles and help humans to taste and talk. The eye is an organ used to see things or as a vision organ. Nose is an organ that acts as an air passage from and to the lungs, more like from and to the body. It is used to breathe and smell. Ear. Ear is both hearing and balancing organ. It comes in a pair and situated symmetrically on either side of the head. The tongue is covered by a layer of papillae containing hundreds of taste buds. The papillae are used to increase the tongue's surface area so human can taste better. The tongue is consisted of eight muscles and is divided equally, four extrinsic and four intrinsic muscles. The tasting function of the tongue can taste five taste modalities, sweetness, sourness, bitterness, saltiness, and savoriness, or umami. The eyeball is made up of three layers, the outer layer, middle layer, and inner layer. In the outermost layer, we have sclera, the dense connective tissue that forms the white part of the eye. In front of the surface of the eye, there is cornea that is protected by a thin and transparent membrane called the conjunctiva. In the middle layer, there is choroid, the black pigmented thin layer of tissues with rich supplies of blood capillaries. In this layer, we also have the ciliary body and the iris. The ciliary body is located behind the iris while the iris is located in front of the lens. The inner layer of the eye is the retina. The retina is located at the back of the eye. Rod cell contains a pigment called rhodopsin. This cell does not respond to color. It only provides black and white vision. 
Rat cells are mostly found around the boundary of the retina. Cone cells contain a pigment called photopsin. These cells only provide vision during daytime or bright light, so it does not work during nighttime. There are three types of cone cells, the S cones that absorbs blue color, M cones that absorbs green color, and L cones that absorbs red color. S stands for short, means it responds the most to short wavelength light peaking at 420 nanometer. M stands for medium, means it responds the most to medium wavelength light peaking at 534 nanometer. L stands for long, means it responds the most to long wavelength light peaking at 564 nanometer. Cone cell is mostly found in the center of the retina. The receptor cells are mostly packed in the vovia. Vovia is a part of the retina where the light is focused when you see an object. This is a place where cone cells are mostly found. So when we look directly at an object, the cone cells give us a sharp image with color while rod cells give us a less detailed image because it is less tightly packed and found further out on the retina. Light rays enters the eye when we look at an object. To get a clear image, rays of light must be refracted so the light can focus exactly on the retina. An inverted image will form in the retina. Then the retina will receive and transmit light into electrical impulses and transfer it along the optic nerves to the brain. The nose has two holes called nostrils. Nostrils are separated by spectrum. The olfactory epithelium is a specialized tissue that lines inside the nasal cavity. It has special receptors that can bind odor molecules. Sinus is the air-filled chambers in the bone around the nose near the nasal passage. The nose has four types of sinuses, ethmoid sinus, maxillary sinus, frontal sinus, and sphenoid sinus. Ethmoid sinus is located around the nose and the eye. Maxillary sinus is located below the cheeks, above the teeth, and on the side of the nose. Frontal sinus is located in the center of the forehead, above each eye. Sphenoid sinus is located centrally and posteriorly within the sphenoid bone. When other molecules enter the nasal cavity and dissolve in the mucus, it will stimulate the receptor protein cells in the olfactory epithelium. When the receptors are stimulated, Signals will travel along the olfactory nerve and transmit information to the olfactory bulb. Then the olfactory bulb will process those signals and pass the information to the brain. The brain will interpret those signals and identify the smell. Here is a C or semicircular shaped organ. It helps with sound localization thanks to the location of the ear, symmetrically located on either side of the head. The ear is furtherly divided into three major parts, outer, middle, and inner ear. Next, we will discuss about the diseases that attack the human regulatory system. Today, we will discuss three of them, hearing loss, cataract, and sinusitis. Hearing loss is a disease that attacks ear. As the name implies, it causes the loss of hearing sensitivity in human body. Hearing loss can be divided into two types, conductive loss and sensory neural loss. The differences between them is a conductive loss is a hearing loss that is caused by outer and middle ear damage. Oppositely, a sensory neural loss is a hearing loss that is caused by injury or damage to the inner ear, vestibulocochlear nerve, or brain. Conductive hearing loss can be treated by tympanoplasty. The damaged ear bones are usually substituted with artificial ones, while sensory neural hearing loss can be treated by cochlear implants. But if the loss is prolonged, a hearing aid can be used to amplify the sound input. Next, cataract. Cataract is a disease that attacks eyes and has no age boundaries. A cataract is when the eye lens gets cloudy. The only treatment available is cataract removal, but there are boundaries to this treatment. Medical expenses, insurance coverage, or even the lack of understanding from the patient prevents them from getting a proper treatment. Sinusitis is an infection that attacks human sinuses. This infection can be caused by either germ, virus, or even fungi. Sinusitis causes nasal passage to swell, and this prevents the mucus to flow normally back to the throat. Even though there are treatment to these diseases, we recommend you to keep your body healthy all the time. That marks the end of this video guide. We hope you can learn and understand the human regulatory system more through watching this video.
Thanks for watching and see you next time.